All right, folks, we're at Book Expo America in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Rich Folley, and I'm sitting with Emily Giffen, who you just told me so many people, you put the R in your name, and they miss that. It's just trying to save I you. I almost tripped up <laughs> now that I, I would have never gone there until you introduced me to the idea. But your new book, First Comes Love, so excited. This is a brand new book for you. You just mentioned this is the first time you really got to sit down and talk about it. It is. Yeah. You, know, you spend all this time with these characters in your head, and you're no, you don't, now when a book is released, you just, you're just talking about it for the first time. So this is really the, truly the first time. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful book about sisterhood primarily, but it's also about family and about tragedy. And it's about figuring out sort of who you are as you grow older. But why don't we start with the sisters part? Because your two main characters, Josie and Meredith Garland, they go sort of different directions and they have this sort of moment that changes them when they're younger, but you have a sister too and something brought you to that whole idea of sisterhood. Right, I've always been interested in sister stories, probably because I have you know, one sibling, an older sister, and it's such an interesting relationship to me. And so, you know, she's my, my sister Sarah is my best friend, yet she's the one I can kind of hate the most yeah. at, at moments. And um, I think it's also interesting that you could be so different than, than your sibling. Um, and Josie and, and Meredith really have very little in common other than their, you know, their shared family and this tragedy that they go through 15 years before the story begins. Yeah, I think there's something really interesting about growing up in a family with more than one child where you sort of sense that there's different personalities and they're obviously sometimes really clear. But when you're young, you're all living together and there's sort of a joyfulness about it. As you get older and start to separate, those differences become more pronounced as you go down your different paths. And that struck me in this book, that these characters had drifted apart. Right. And yet they were still glued together in ways that they couldn't always even understand. I think a lot of times you define yourself based on what you are compared to your sibling. So she's the smart one. And in a certain family, like I always think about Giselle's sister is gorgeous, but in Giselle, whatever her last name Brunchen. is, supermodel, right. Of course you know it. Yeah. You're like, I don't. What if I put an R in her name, <laughs> or Brunchen? You yeah. wouldn't do that, though. <laughs> no. uh, you follow her on too many uh, forms uh, of social do. media. Okay, I know. you got okay. me. But the point is, she probably thinks of herself as, you know, the less attractive one, or, you know, I'm not, the, my sister's the beautiful one, I'm the smart one. You could, I remember I, I was talking to a woman recently who had this big, huge job, and I'm like, oh, something in corporate America, but she had a neurosurgeon sister. I'm like, oh, you're the dumb one in your family then. So um, the I think tag. those comparisons too happen and it can really define us in ways that can be positive and negative. Yeah. Well, you, this is also a story about tragedy. I mean, the story of Daniel, the brother, um, and it's pretty early in the book when this tragedy strikes, something terrible happens. It splits his family up. It really cracks everybody apart to some degree. The, the mother, the father, he was, he, had a, he was engaged or they had found somebody that he really loved, uh, this other character, Sophie. And that whole idea of how tragedy can take a, a family on a certain trajectory and send them off on a completely different one is also a really important part of this book. It is, it is. I, I think that um, the, the reaction to grief is so complex and, you know, again, even in the same family, you can have very different, you know, reactions to it. And I think one of the sisters um, sort of overcorrected in terms of trying to please her parents and make up for that loss and uh, make a lot of choices that she thought they would, they would like. And I think a lot of us can fall into that trap. Um, I think it's a firstborn trap. Um, in particular, and I think the other sister had some guilt and, and went in a, veered off in a different direction. There was a fundamental misunderstanding between these two, two women um, of what the other one was thinking. And um, you know, when the book comes up, they're sort of at this crossroads in their own lives, making decisions about their life. And um, it's, you know, it really all goes back to that moment in time. Um, secrets are, not, are unearthed and they, um, they really have to explore the, the what happened that night and their relationship, everything that's followed since. Yeah, and there's, there's another element to this too. One of your characters is really desperate, or maybe that's a strong word, but really wants to become a mother and isn't married, hasn't found the right person yet, and mm -hmm. is still looking for that part of their life. And, and there's a longing that you feel all along there. And this sort of notion of, of motherhood pervades throughout the book too. And I, I wanted you to talk a little bit about that idea of someone who, Maybe the perfect situation hasn't happened, but there's still a strong desire sure. to sort of, you know, sure. that maternal instinct is so strong. 
Well, a lot of my books up until this point, this is my eighth novel, and a lot of them have been about you know, finding love, fi looking for true love, finding true love, searching for that relationship. And um, this book, in some ways, is about you know, what if you don't find exactly what you're looking for? You know, how do you take control of your life and make it be what you want it to be? And I think this is very central to a, what a lot of women in their 30s and 40s and beyond are, are facing. And this, is, this idea of motherhood is just, it's just one of those, but um, you know, for Josie, she wants to be a mother. She hasn't found the right person. You know, what do you do? Do you just accept? Do you just accept it, or do you, you know, go about the problem a little more creatively? So, I think this book is more about finding yourself and finding happiness than than it is about finding love per se. Yeah, you mentioned eight books. You have so many. Uh, Something borrowed, where we belong, the one and only. Something Brown, the uh, Something Brown, Something Blue, that sort of mix, where mm -hmm. you did go back and you have the same characters. Those, uh, those stories are all different, and yet there is something very Emily Giffenish that goes through all of your writing. What, when, you, when people come to you, do you feel like sort of a, uh, a responsibility to that Giffen thing, or is it just in you that that's just the way you're always going to write? Or are you like, oh, I'm veering off as you're thinking mm -hmm. about that next book? Well, I think that all of my books explore the, the messiness of relationships, the gray areas, the fact that we're all sort of fundamentally, most of us are fundamentally good people trying to get it right, and yet we're, there's missteps along the way, and we hurt the ones we love, and there's just a, there's great messiness to relationships, and that's something that I, that I love to explore, the nuances of that. I've always said if I weren't a writer, I would love to be a, you know, a therapist, a psychologist. And I think you discuss. sort of are a therapist. I mean, it, it, with it, all due apologies to, to the, therapists to the, to who the, have <laughs> gone to school, and, but in a way, you serve that purpose to the people who are reading your books, I think. Oh, that's very, that's a nice characterization. I like to think that it can help people sort through their, their issues. I remember when Where We Belong came out, it was two books ago, it was about a, a woman who had given her daughter up for adoption. I received a, a number, I have a file, I saved the emails from, from women who were either adopted or put their baby up for adoption or uh, were looking for their birth mother. And, um, and that's a great feeling as a, as a writer. When you're, again, as I mentioned, you're, you're sort of in this insular world where you're writing this story and then when it comes out and the world meets these characters, to, to know that people are connecting with it is, is very gratifying. Well, this is the place to come out of the insular world, to come to Book Expo <laughs> no, America. Right? I mean, if you look around. I just landed yeah. on the plane and came right here, and I'm talking about my book for the first time, to a man in a pink tie. That's right. So hey, this is like, you, you know, That's right. matches my first novel. But I mean, really a splash to be able to come out into this, into this place. This is really where cool. Where you're really in front of a hot The energy of here, and to know that everybody in this place, every person in this place, loves books. Right. Is, is a really cool connection. Yeah. You and me so. both. We both think the same. Well, Emily Giffen, your new book, First Comes Love, which comes out June 28th. June 28th. Very excited, and your fans are too. Really nice to have you here on our set. Very Thank nice. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Thanks, Thank you. Emily.